the workbench again and I wanted to say uh, develop. The circuit that I published say one day ago uh, better. Make it a better circuit so not uh, usable only to say beep to amplify beep signals but only uh, but also to amplify real audio. So here is that better circuit. I hope it's visible. Uh, it differs the, uh, not so much of the earlier circuit. Anyway, uh, I mounted here a 470 ohms resistor. A 190 ohm resistor between the two bases, and then the say the first stage that's very, very important because it sets the bias of the whole amplifier, and that's in general uh, that in general applies to all kinds of audio amplifiers made with say such a complementary end stage and here it is by the uh, BC uh, 4 5 or 7 NPN and here the BC 5 5 7 PMP so this is PMP this is NPN here is the coupling capacitor out. I've used a somewhat bigger speaker anyway. Uh, this is the driver. And the very, very strange thing was that I uh, had to use a 100 nanofarad capacitor from the emitter to the collector. And furthermore, there's nothing, say, uh, special regarding the circuit. So. Let's give it a try and add the voltage to the circuit. Say, uh, that's perhaps interesting to tell. Say, we are now on 8 volts approximately. And you see here a very, very uh, big cross over uh, distortion. But anyway, let's try to set the bias. So here is that bias potentiometer, it's one mega ohm. And when I set that bias to a somewhat other value, it disappears. So that that here's the crossover crossover distortion and here no crossover distortion so that works very good say let's go now to uh, another frequency band where this amplifier can work of course uh, the say amplification on a lower frequency and my speaker is not able to say reproduce that, but anyway, when you use a say a serious uh, low frequency speaker that can work on say 30 hertz or 100 hertz, anyway, you will hear it. Um, so I have to go to a, a higher frequency. Good waveform, no problems at all. And now to the say the highest frequency. Of course you can hear it now. You don't hear it now because my loudspeaker is not able to say reproduce 10 uh, kilohertz. Anyway, the waveform is good. That's the most important thing to tell. Back to the circuit. So the schematic again, only uh, say very simple and tiny transistors are used. That means that, that such a circuit can only give out say 100 milliwatt, perhaps. Pen over somewhat. 
But anyway, it's a good circuit, usable, and I want to demonstrate now all the, say, strange properties. Of course, not strange. Why we uh, are looking at, uh, say, electronics theory when the voltage is changed to this circuit. So now it's pure sine wave and we have 8 volts. So I want to go back now to say uh, 5 volts or so. Let's see what happens. And here you see that typical say crossover distortion. The reason is in this case that there is a resistor here. So uh, I can explain that much better but uh, my video will be far too long. A crossover distortion on 4.5 volts. Let's see on which frequency there is no crossover distortion. So here 7.5 volts, so 9 volts is say in my opinion an ideal frequen uh, uh, frequency uh, voltage supply. So 8.9 volts and I now go to the to a very high value And the strange thing, or the good thing, is that uh, the circuit has a kind of optimum. So now it's 70 volts. And now it is 7.5 volts. And here the distortion, but on say 8 volts it's okay. And when the voltage gets too high, the waveform is not amplified good or so. There is a kind of, uh, say, less amplification on higher voltages. So anyway, the best uh, voltage is, say, 9 volt or 8 volt. So the circuit again. That was all. That was all what I wanted to tell. Thanks for watching. Pen over somewhat. Simple circuit. Uh, only needs two or three uh, low power transistors. So. Um, well, that was all to tell.